Hello there everybody, Data Pioneer with the Linux Unix Tech Channel and today I wanted to come to you and uh, uh, show you some a couple of things in Farron OS uh, on my virtual machine here uh, in VirtualBox 6.0 Manager on my main PC. So welcome and thank you for joining me today. Uh, the two things I want to show you today in my operating system here which I really love by the way, Farron OS uh, is my daily driver now on bare metal on my laptop and I'm using it as a VM. I'm finding that I'm in this particular distro of Linux more than I am in Windows these days. Uh, so it's a great uh, operating system. If you haven't uh, gone to it yet or if you haven't gone to Linux and you're thinking about going to Linux, check out Farron OS December 2019 build. You'll, uh, you'll thank me later. All right, so I'm in the operating system now and uh, here's why I say if you're switching over to, from Windows 10 to, to Linux, you might want to go there. In the Start menu, I've got the Redmond layout. I need to show you this real quick before we get into the other. Look at this. This is this looks just like Windows 10. I go up here and click on that. You know, it brings it down where I can get into. Um, automatically takes me to where I want to go here uh, in this menu. So this is a Windows 10-like looking menu. It's called the Tile menu. And, uh, and so I wanted to show you that. So that's why I was saying if you're uh, transitioning from Windows 10 to Linux, you might want to take a look at that. Baron OS, December 2019 build. All right, so the two things that I want to get into today is the file manager, which is Nemo. The other thing I want to get into is the web browser I've just installed called Brave. Uh, and I want to show you what that can do and why I like it. So here we are in file manager. This is Nemo. Let me bring that down and uh, click on help and about. Uh, we are in Nemo 4.2.3. I really like it. Here's uh, the license for it here, which is the GNU uh, public license, general public license. All right. And um, here's why I like uh, Nemo, because it has the capability of connecting to two things. Uh, well, three things, actually. My local system here. Uh, it also allows me to connect to uh, things on my network. I have a 5 terabyte personal cloud that I connect to using the GNOME FTP client or another client that will allow me to FTP or SSH into my personal cloud. And then the other thing I get into occasionally uh, is my Raspberry Pi, which is the single board computer that I have running 24-7 connected to my LAN. And so to do that, let me show you how I connect to my personal cloud through Nemo. I click Network. It takes me here. And here is Windows 10 Desktop, Windows Network, my WD, my cloud, 5 terabyte personal cloud, and my Raspberry Pi uh, single board computer. All right. So if I double click or right click and open the WD, my cloud, it brings this up asking me, do I want to connect to it anonymously or a registered user? I don't have anonymous turned on. I only have registered user. So um, if I click on the registered user and I put in my account, my personal cloud, and put in my password, uh, the first time you connect, this does take a few seconds to, uh, to make the connection. It is actually using something called the Apple File Protocol, AFP, to make the connection. And I'll show you that when it comes up. Uh, and it um, doesn't, you know, subsequent getting into this is very quick. The first time does take a few seconds. And so let me right click and get into the public side now. The first time you access a folder after getting in, it also takes a few seconds. To open it up, but after that, it's immediate. Um, and I'm assuming that it has to do the handshaking and the things that it that it does to get into the personal cloud itself. And so uh, I will show you this when I get in here, and show you what you can do with it. So now I'm it has mounted my personal cloud on the public side, and it's using the AFP, the Apple File Protocol, to do that. Uh, and so let me go over here and drag that up to there. And so let me get into my documents folder or let the pictures folder here. Let me right click. This is on my local system. And let me go ahead and open this in a new window so that I get a new 
uh, Nemo window opening up here. So this is my personal side, um, my uh, local side in Farron OS. And then this is the my cloud, personal cloud here that I have uh, out on the network. And so if I bring this down, uh, I have a shared pictures folder. Here it is. Okay. So if I um, take a file, let's say this current Farron OS desktop, and if I take and drag, left click and drag that to my shared pictures on my personal cloud, it's going to copy that over, okay? Which it just did. Let me go ahead and close the local system and bring in the public side and let's open up the shared folder here. Uh, here's the current OS desktop. So if I right click and open with Photo Viewer, it should show you the snapshot I took a little while ago uh, on the 17th. Uh, on the 6th of January at 1748.18 of my desktop here in Farron OS. So copied it right over and I can go the other way as well. I can go from the uh, local system or from the personal cloud back to my local system if I want to do it that way. So if I open up, let's say, uh, in the documents folder here, and open that in a new window, and this is my local system again. And uh, I wanted to take something that's on the uh, personal cloud, let's say my um, miscellaneous folder, I wanted to copy that into my documents folder in the local system, left click and drag it out here onto my um, documents folder in the local system. It's copying 104 files, doing it pretty rapidly too. Um, not sure the transfer rate is about 15 megabits megabytes per second all right and so here it is here's my miscellaneous uh, folder here that it copied over all right okay so you can do it one way or the other and that that is with uh, Nemo uh, the file manager all right let me get to uh, back to network and show you that I, now I want to connect to my Raspberry Pi so I'm going to right click and open the Raspberry Pi. I run this 24-7 so it never shuts down. And so let's go into the public side of my Raspberry Pi. And So let me do a right click and open with files. It's asking me how do I want to connect. Now I have a registered account set up and I have that account called Pi. And uh, the password for it, I'll go ahead and put that in. Click connect, should connect me. Uh, doesn't appear to be anything in that folder. So let's go ahead and go to the pictures folder on my local system. Let me open that up. I didn't mean to open it that way. So let me go back in again. And so I've got both of these mounted, by the way. Now this is on the Raspberry Pi. And so um, I'll tell you what, let's, let's rather than do, no, let's go ahead and do that. Let's see, uh, pictures on my local system, let me open in a new window. We open a new window here. And so let's take a screenshot that I did here of Farron, let's say Farron OS using Nemo. Uh, this is a different screenshot. Let me drag that onto the Raspberry Pi in the public side. Copy it right away. So let's go ahead and close that. And so now I'm on the Raspberry Pi. And let me open that up with the photo viewer. And so I can copy things from my local system to either my Raspberry Pi or my personal cloud, uh, five terabyte personal cloud, uh, very easily using Nemo as the file manager and using the various protocols that are uh, necessary to make that happen. Now for the Raspberry Pi, I'm not using the AFP protocol. I'm actually using SMB, which is a simple message block protocol to copy to the Raspberry Pi because that's what it uses. The Raspberry Pi is running Raspbian OS which is a derivation of Debian Linux. All right. Okay, so that's Nemo and what you can do with it. Now, I want to show you my uh, new browser called Brave. Let me uh, open up the menu here in Farron and let me put in the Web Browser Manager and uh, in this find window, bring that up, and I want to show you the web browser manager is a neat little manager in Farron OS that allows me to install web browsers and uninstall those very easily. 
And you can see we have an uninstall button here under Vivaldi, so that means I have Vivaldi installed, and I do. And I also have an uninstall button under Brave, which means I have the Brave web browser installed, and I do, and I'll show you that in a moment. But here are the other browsers that I can install, uh, either Mozilla Firefox, Google Chrome, GNOME Web, Chromium, Opera, Falcon, okay? Or I can uninstall the ones that I have here by clicking the uninstall button. Let me go ahead and close the web browser manager and let me go back into the menu here and let me click on I can either go here or I can go to the tile let me go to the tile let me go ahead and open up the Brave web browser now the Brave web browser is based uh, it's based on Chromium uh, and but it's it's really nice because it's got security and privacy built into it uh, by default uh, and uh, as you can see over here, uh, things going on. So I've got the Kadaza.com uh, start page set up. I will show you this. www.kadaza.com brings up the start page, and you need to set up an account in here in Kadaza and set this up. But you'll, you'll thank me for doing it because let me tell you guys, uh, this this video is not about Kadaza, but. I will tell you that, and I'll put a link for this uh, underneath the video. This this will save you a bunch of time uh, surfing the web because you can access your news by clicking the news button, and it brings up your default uh, links here for your various news that you might uh, have set up with accounts. I have here for Washington Post. I click on that. It takes me to my Washington Post, and I can just sign in and get directly to my news. Uh, or I can go to other websites for news as well. Uh, if I want to go strictly to tech news, I can click on the tech news button over here, and that takes me to you know Wired or TechCrunch or The Verge. I go to The Verge all the time for my technology news, and so that's a really nice thing to have as well. And that's what you see here is not all you get though, guys, because if you can click on the more button here, and it takes you out to a uh, you know, a sorted version here of things that you can get access to here in Kadaza. So for under H, for instance, look at all that you have access to. Uh, hotels and uh, hostels, click on that, and it takes you out to all of your links for the various um, choices that you have here in Kadaza for hotels. Check out Kadaza. It's not why we're here today, but I wanted to show you that that is available, and so check it out. You'll like it. Now, if I click another new tab button, it takes me away from the start page, which is my home page, uh, which is set up here. Uh, but it takes me out to this particular thing. And here's a speed dial of frequently opened websites. So I go to my mail at ProtonMail, my inlandexveritas.com, uh, which is my home page uh, and is my personal blog. All right. And so. Uh, go there and so these these are set up every time you access another link by the way in brave uh, you get a different background here's what I was telling you about ads and trackers so we have 751 ads and trackers that have been blocked so far and this is integrated into the browser itself I get no ads I get absolutely zero ads on any website that I access uh, because I have not opted out of this. I've opted into it actually. This is inherent in web uh, the Brave web browser. You'll like it. Uh, however, I'll show you you can opt out of it for whatever ads you want to see uh, and it, they actually reward you for doing that. So I'll show you that in a moment. 32 HTTPS upgrades have occurred here on this browser while I've been using it and it estimates that I've saved 38 seconds while surfing the web by the fact that I have turned off ads and trackers and other things, okay? Got a little clock out here on the right-hand side, which I can remove if I want to. Uh, I like it, so I'm going to keep it, all right? So if I go to um, the Pancake, as I call it, I can customize the Brave web browser. Um, I can go to a new window. I can go to a private window. And so a private window takes me to an incognito mode, um, uh, web browser session for Brave. DuckDuckGo is my default web browser search engine. And so 
as, as you can see here. And it, if I go into incognito mode, I can keep that if I like, or I can actually access the incognito mode using the Tor web browser or the Tor connection. Okay, And so when I uh, click off of here and go back to a and exit the private window uh, or session in the Brave web browser, I get back to my regular session. Uh, then I get out of incognito mode and go back out here. I stay in it as long as I don't do what I just did. All right, let's go back up here. I've got uh, history that I can access here. I can sync my browser with other devices. I can start a new sync chain, not on the VM, but if I go into uh, my bare metal install of Farron, I've already synced this with my iPhone. And so uh, you can sync with mobile devices as well, so that when you get on your mobile device and you get onto the Brave web browser, you don't have to duplicate, reinvent the wheel. It's already there for you. It's a really neat thing to do. Highly encourage you to do that. All right. Crypto wallets is something I have looked at briefly. I have not taken advantage of it. Uh, but it is for if you're using the Ethereum tokens or um, Bitcoin, you can access create a new wallet for your bitcoins and access these things for connecting to Ledger and for Trezor. Uh, I'm not doing that right now. I'll go to downloads. This is my downloads that I've taken so far in the virtual machine. I've cleared those recently so there's none there. Bookmarks. Here are all my bookmarks right now. Um, I go to other bookmarks or bookmarks. I've actually cleared that out I believe. History. Here's all my history. Uh, for today and I have set up for other days as well. Brave Rewards is something I wanted to show you and this is uh, something you can either opt into or you can stay opted out of and this that's my choice right now until I look at this a little cl closer. I can elect to look at certain ads in the Brave web browser that Brave allows to come in if I click yes I'm in and then I can uh, tell it what I want to see, what I don't want to see. Uh, if you want to check out how it works, you can do that down here, uh, down below. But they actually reward you by giving you money for checking out their ads. And so right now, I just don't, do not want to see the ads, and so I'm not worried about it. Under settings here, uh, I can get in and do other things like the appearance. Uh, I can make my uh, Brave the default browser, which I have done. It is my default browser right now. Uh, on startup, I can tell it to open a specific page, which is Kadaza. Uh, I want uh, uh, the brave colors to be the dark and theme to be classic. Um, and then I can do other things down here. I won't go through all of this, but you can see that I've got it set up for syncing, for default views, for social media. Uh, I allow Facebook. I don't allow Twitter or LinkedIn. Uh, extension search engine I've got is DuckDuckGo, but I can select others here if I want to. DuckDuckGo is a, a great search engine, by the way, if you want to, uh, if you're concerned about privacy and security, DuckDuckGo, DuckDuckGo is the way to go here. Um, all right, and so uh, other things that we have here is extensions. So you've got extensions for WebTorrent, Crypto Wallet, for Hangouts. Uh, other things that you can do here, if you've got additional settings that you can take advantage of down here as well. So Brave Web Browser is a great web browser, guys. Check it out. Uh, it is available in Farron OS through the Web Browser Manager, as I showed you. And so just take advantage of that, and uh, you'll thank me later. Um, I'm loving Farron OS, and uh, it is my daily driver. On, as a virtual machine and on the bare metal install on my uh, laptop. All right, so this has been Data Pioneer. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you like this uh, uh, video, go ahead and uh, click thumbs up to give me uh, support on my channel. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and cl click the sub sub uh, subscribe button. It should come up and let you do that. And uh, so you have a nice day and take care. Bye-bye.